I wasn't planning on doing a video today, but sometimes the pest problem is so unique and severe and interesting to me that I just want to share it with you guys. Today we have a rat infestation at this customer's house. It is Norway rats or gray rats. They burrow into the ground. Let me show you exactly what I'm seeing. I just talked to the customer inside. They showed me the droppings, and as soon as I saw the droppings, I knew it was rats and not mice. Rat droppings are about yay big, almost a centimeter long, where mice droppings are less than half that. The The person I was talking to, the customer, actually said that the, the rat they saw, you know, they saw the actual animal a few days ago, and they said it was, let me show you. She said it was this big. <laughs> Which that's a little big for a rat. I guess if you count the tail that that could be the right size also But I just just did a lap around the outside of this house. This house is not in the best shape There are multiple entry points for these rats to get into but in today's video I'm going to show you exactly how I'm baiting them. We're going to go into the crawl space I'm going to set bait stations outside the house inside the crawl space because there is major major rat activity around this whole house Look at that hole guys this is massive, almost three, four inches across. That is a major access point for the rats getting into this house. And I can only assume that is a major access point as well. There's just a huge gap where anything can get up here. I mean, this is super, super obvious gnawing activity right here. And they have this retaining wall right here. And this could even be a rat entry point into there also. There are multiple areas where these rats are getting into. So I'm gonna keep on showing you around the outside first. Today's rat video is sponsored by BrioStack. BrioStack is my customer relationship management software that I use to run my company, but more to come on that later. I think this is probably an entry point right here. You can see little scratch marks right there. And it's just a huge hole, huge hole into this house. And there's insulation being like pulled out. See this insulation right here? That is not supposed to be there. There is cat food. They have cats inside. There's cat food scattered throughout the house. That is most likely the food source for these rats. There is a ton. This is also burrowing activity here when you see all these just dirt being thrown out. There's probably a tunnel back in there. So let's, let's finish walking around. There's another burrowing point right here. Check this out. This is just a walkway up into the house. And right here, see how it's just, it's just plain dirt. There's no leaves around it. That is 1000% a rat's burrow down into there. <laughs> These rats burrow into the soil and they go into your crawl space. Here's the crawl space entrance right here that we're going to go into. So I'm gonna go ahead and prop that up. But I wasn't planning on videoing today because it is a nipply 15 degrees outside. I'm doing this video for you. Let me show you what we got here. Uh, again, with the rodent stations, I'm trying to get, honestly, just a feel of like which bait is best. So I'm going to use three different baits today. We're going to use the JT Eaton uh, bait blocks for rodents and ticks right here. We're going to use Resolve soft bait right here by Leaf Attack, and I'm also going to use some Contract by Bell. And we're going to put them in these rodent bait stations. Right here we have Bell bait stations. And we've got these cool JT top loader bait stations where you can put the bait in the top so the bait is stored in here and the rats crawl through here and eat the baits that way. We're also going to set up some JT Eaton jaws traps inside some of these stations. I just like to use some snap traps sometimes. It's nice to actually, you know, get the, the body tag of the rat or mice you're trying to catch. I'm also going to wear my respirator in the crawl space as much as I can and maybe I'll just voice over at the end because this infestation looks pretty severe and the rats, they rats stink and they carry diseases and I just want to be as clean as possible. Let's go ahead and crack these bad boys open. You know, I have these coveralls and I just now realized that they have openings on the side so you can put your hands inside and pull out your normal pants pocket so I can get my car keys here <laughs> that have my rodent bait station keys on them. These open here. I've already got some of these actually already baited up. Twist it open. And then you put the bait on this holder here. So let's get a, a JT Eaton right there. Let's do a 
bell contract block here. And then we'll do a Leaf Attack Resolve on top of that. One more JT Eden on top. Actually, I think I can fit another one. These rats are pretty heavily infested. So once you do that, you slide it down into the container here, line it up like this, twist it back into place. And then <laughs> everything's so hard to do right now. My fingers, even with these thick gloves on, are bitter, bitter cold. And then you just tighten it down. Honestly, I can't wait to get inside the crawl space and check out the tunneling. I mean, the the Norway rat burrows, they just kind of fascinate me. I only get to see really extreme Norway rat infestations a couple times a year. They're just not super common. But I see mice, mice weekly, every single week. I see mice all the time. And sometimes you just get tired of the mice. Like I want some big rats, you know? So we got them. We got rats today, which makes me very excited. I've already talked to the customer about this, but I'm going to recommend to come back in about two or three weeks from today's service. We're gonna check the traps again and see how everything looks. I want to see a rat, you know, I wanna see how big. They said they were this big. <laughs> I don't believe them. The body of a Norway rat is about this big. She was like holding it out here. So we'll see, I guess there could be some big ones, but. I'm excited to get into the crawl space. Also, I've got to label these rodent bait stations with what bait I'm using and put my company name on here in case anything happens with the poison. So I'm going to go into the truck and write my company name down here. We're going to get these traps set up and I'll just see you in just a couple seconds. Okay, this is all it is here. Ignore my terrible handwriting. It's just so cold. My fingers are just frozen right now. But yeah, you just mark what baits you're using and then your your company name, phone number, and then the month you applied it. And then now we're just going to put the bait stations on the outside of the house and then we're going to crawl to the crawl space, put some bait stations under the house and see what's going on there. I'll Here's one bait station. I'm not overthinking it. I just see this huge, huge opening right here. Uh, and then I know the rats are just tunneling right through here or the trailing over to this opening right there. So then I put the other one over here and I just saw this other huge burrow right there underneath the ramp. And that station is right there against the wall. You always want to put them against the wall. I got flashlight. I'm going to go ahead and put on my respirator. I got the two bait stations here. I got some extra bait in, in my crawl suit here in case it looks really bad. Come on. Rats are social animals, preferring to live in colonies. Understanding their social dynamics is crucial for effective pest control, as eliminating one rat might not solve the entire problem. The size of a rat colony can vary based on factors such as food availability, shelter, and environmental conditions. On average, a rat colony may consist of 6 to 12 rats, but larger colonies with 20 or more rats are not uncommon, especially in areas with abundant resources. The social structure within a rat colony usually consists of a dominant male and female. Rats within a colony work together to find food, care for offspring, and defend their territory. <laughs> the rats have definitely been going inside. We found an Almond Joy wrapper that is just destroyed. I'm sure the rats love that. Okay, see all these little moldy pieces of poop right here? That is exactly what they are. They're moldy rat poop. This is not fresh. These are really old and they've molded, but all on this board here, there's just rat poop. I mean, that's the size of it. Uh, almost a half an inch long right there, that one. And just everywhere, all that insulation, that's definitely rodent nesting. They'll just pull it out of, you know, wherever they can find it, make their nest out of it, bring it down into their burrows for warmth. So I'm gonna keep crawling around, looking for the main burrows so I can put the bait stations as close to the burrow as possible. But I don't really have to. I mean, these rats forage up to like actually a hundred yards from their main burrow. They're always, always looking for food. So even if I just put the bait stations just right here at the crawl space entrance, they're going to find them, but I'm going to keep looking to see if I can 
find the big tunnel entrance into the ground. A fun and not so fun part of my job is that you never really know what you're going to find underneath someone's home. Here I found a huge population of cave crickets overwintering together. Cave crickets, also known as camel crickets or spider crickets, are unique in that they lack wings. Unlike many other cricket species, cave crickets are flightless relying on their powerful hind legs for jumping and maneuvering in the dark and damp habitats. My speculation is that there is some sort of heating source coming from inside the home that these cave crickets are absolutely loving. Obviously, they are also loving the dripping moisture too. This may mean that the home may have some leaks somewhere inside. There is definitely major rat activity here. You can see all of the dirt pellets dug out as well as pieces of insulation and large holes in the vents. Rats can be quite destructive during their normal burrowing and foraging activities. Okay. Unfortunately, I was not able to find the big burrow entrance into the ground I was looking for. I crawled throughout the crawl space, but there's all that plastic laid down, so the burrow could be under the plastic where I can't really see it. Rat droppings absolutely everywhere. This house is out in the middle of the country. There's nothing around it. I mean, some other small houses, but it's a double wide trailer. I think the main problem here is that they have cats inside and the cat food is just everywhere throughout the house. So I already told them to clean up the cat food. You saw that almond joy, like these rats are just feeding off of the messiness of these people that live here. This is, uh, there are one, two, three, four. There's four cars in this driveway and it's a super small house. I think there's like six people six people living here. So I'm sure it is hard to keep everything clean with so many people living here, but I'm going to encourage them to do so. Well, I'm just going to go inside and collect payment. I'm charging $149 collecting payment through my amazing pest control software, Brio Stack. Um, I'm collecting the payment through them, sending them the invoice through them, the appointment record through them. Brio Stack is going to automatically send the customer an email and text message reminding them that their follow-up appointment is due for me to come and take care of those rats. And BrioStack helps my company run extremely, extremely well. So thank you to BrioStack for making my company run well. And I'm going to see you guys in about two weeks.